Welcome to the stone hands, to the hands of stone. This day we will dwell into the Viking Age, Baltic Sea region, to the lands of the Finns, the Fens, the Livonians, the Ests. There was this mythological land that Peters from Greece told stories about the ultimate hole, the Aesti, the ultimate north, where lays a kingdom of people who were fair in the statue. And there came the great treasure of amber, the elect electrum. And those people who dwelled in those northern spheres, they were the great melters of iron ore and of the cosmic metals that had fallen on this land. The story of the Loki and also the story of Ragnarok, the last battle between the gods, may be inspired by the story of a great meteor falling to this land, to this ground. In the Åland, the Sarema, we have a huge crater of meteor that fell there around 6,000 years ago and put everything in flames. And there are many other shops and pieces of meteor that probably destroyed the civilization that was during that time around here. And when we look to the evidence about the Greenland being green and the oak forests going to, to the north, up to the Lapland, many places carrying the name of hemp or the cannabis. So here were the weavers of the hemp cloth, but also the linen. Here was a fair society which sadly does not pose a lot of archaeological evidence, but there has been found some log houses that are around six to eight thousand years old in Finland. And that's a totally new evidence of habitants around those areas. But during the Viking Age, there was huge trade going, going through the Gulf of Finland. We have each year a memoriam for that. We have the night of the Byers. We lit the burning byers by the coast through all the Gulf of Finland. Such byers were held in the ancient times all all day all nights long because they were the guarding fires that no strangers could sail upon those lands. But no strangers could enter the Gulf of Finland and the coastal areas of nowadays Finland and Estonia and Latvia and even Lithuania without a sign of warning. Those seas were guarded like some recalls from the, the times of the Tonic knights who invited the land. How they tried to take some trees from the, from the land and suddenly there were a swarm of boats and fierce warriors sinking their ships and attacking and pushing them back. And the maritime law comes from the Baltic Sea, from the Gulf of Finland, from the ancient Finns. The maritime law that nowadays is used around jurisdiction around the world. This is the old law of the sea. And when the Germans or the Teutons conquered the lands of Estonia, this Estland. They tried to impose their own laws, but then they understood that the maritime law was greater than their laws on the sea. And many Finns le were left to rule around the sea. Only the rulers of the jurisdiction changed. I hope it doesn't sound too complicated. But during the Viking Age, there was 
and huge melting pot of metals and the people who lived here they wore beautiful bracelets necklaces rings helmets even the woman and not for the purpose of war but for the purpose of beauty and for the purpose of having those precious metals around our bodies they had beautiful belts with uh, with beautiful um, pictures on, on them and they were wo woven belts and and the way people communicated to the song to the rhythm and with the drum they had the songs of weavers when they were weaving the wool and thread they had songs like da 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 when they communicated with other realms of realities like the like the phrase from time to time people used to go from time to time they were time travelers they were natural in traveling time they were natural in wearing paramagnetic jewelry from gold from silver and from other metals like the name of tin the one element of them when you are going to make bronze then with copper and tin then there was this name for the tin the english dinner the english tin and people also used the tin and copper and bronze necklaces and wear so they could empower their inner beings and their way to communicate with the universe yes and the Varangians, the Varangquart, who went to the to the Byzant Byzantium, to the emperor of the whole of the Roman Empire, they were from here, the Vara, Varangian, the accumulator of wealth. Vara is wealth, our, our earthly possessions. The Russian words Tavarish, it's also Tavarish, to the Vara. To collect vara, tuva vara, tavarish, or in Finnish word toveri. It's all about accumulating wealth and holding it. And those great Varanian helmets and the helmets found in the Sutton Hu in England, they all relate to those, those Finns, those ancient Viking Finns who have been left to the shadows of the history because of the German German history of the history of of the suppressors who came to this land and said you were nothing before you were only beasts you were a forest people who had no culture but actually the culture that we had here is deep like the maritime love that has been cultivated all around the world comes from the Finnic traders and seafarer men and the river basins, the great Volga rivers and other Anis Yogi and so on. The ancient Finns, they went to the Ukrainian Rus and to the Kiev and formed the first Rus kingdom actually. And they were the great hands building the great kingdom of the ancient Finns and Finno Agriks. But nowadays we say they were Scans and they were the Germanic people. But Germanic people, they had little influence. Their influence came in the later periods through the migration of languages and, and the creation of new kingdoms and new nations. To keep that in mind, we see a lot of evidence of also raids and parties of raiders that went together of the Germanic and Finnic origin and the great lands of Russia to the U Ural mountains where the Finns, the land of the Finns and in the ancient times there was this Vedic kingdom or Vedrasia. The Russian historians have said that there are three princes of people living in Russia. One the, they are Slavs, Slavic people. Second, they are Rus Russian, the Russic, so it means Finnic, and three, Turkish, like the Kazakhstani and Turks and so on. 
and together they make the na nowadays nation of Russia. And all this story goes back to this greatness of the Viking Age and how those kingdoms were formed. And later, when they were converting to Christianity, people that started to forget their ancient traditions where they were the worshippers of the nature, the worshippers of the beauty of nature. And they were in communion with the forests. And then they built stone churches and something changed. And the paradigm of the world changed. The language changed. Like many times we can see in Kirillitsa, the Russian alphabet, how the letters and the language has been reduced throughout the time for the purpose of control and manipulation. Also, the other language has have suffered the manipulation of language, the suffocation of the ancient spoken word. For example, 100 years ago, or a little bit over 120 years ago in France, there were over 100 different languages or local dialects that was spoken around the French and they created a general, generalized French. The same happened in many other countries. The English dialects, the Cambrian and so on. And, and over here also in, a, in, the, in the Phoenix lands, we created the national countries of Finland and Estonia and so on. That the languages were suffocated and there were created gener generic languages that started speaking one common language. The common language of the north, the common language of the south, which is quite misleading because in the past the language has been more diverse and more ancient. And when the language is ancient, it has the words of power that are able to create in a beautiful way. But when we go back to the Tower of ba Babel, then we see that there was one unified global language, but people became wicked and evil. And God had decided to punish them and make them speak thousands of different languages. And this thing, or maybe we are in a process of, of, of evolution to one global language that is probably derived from the English, most probably. But English is derived from many other languages. When we look at the Shakespearean English, I can speak it with more greater ease than the nowadays English because the words they are more ancient and resemble the root Finnic language that I I do spoke. So the way the ancient English but I'm not exactly speaking it like it is it was spoken but I'm just giving an example of the consonants and vowels that are easy for me to speak, you say. I, yes. But there are some thoughts for you to contemplate and to look back. As I've been studying the languages in the Baltic Sea, the Danish, the Finnish, the Estonian, the Russian, and some Swedish, I see so many correlations and so many intertwining roots. The greatest asset is that Adin in the the number one in Russian is Odin, the great god of Valhalla. So I wish you all the best and see you next time.